Today, I'm going to share with you a full in-depth Luminar Neo review. I'm so excited about today. Since I first found out about Luminar Neo around about four months ago, I've been waiting to get my hands on it and take it for a spin. It's finally here. The full released version is right here today, and I'm super excited to share that with you so we can have a real in-depth look at how Luminar Neo performs, what the interface is like, all of the new tools and features, and really exactly who it's for. If you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button and the bell. I'd love to have you join the channel here at Ben's Guide. Let's dive right in. When you first open up Luminar Neo, you're gonna find yourself in this area right here. You've got the catalog section and you've got the edit section. So catalog is where you actually upload your photos. You can add your photos in this section here and then you can sort them and you can arrange them exactly how you like. When you've actually done that and you've added your photos in here, this is where you can then go into the edit tab and it's where all the fun stuff happens. So if we then click on the edit tab up here, this is gonna open up the edit tab and it's gonna give you access to all of the tools that you can really transform the look of your photo with. On the right hand side, you'll see that you've got essentials, you've got creative, you've got portrait, and finally professional. These are all of your editing tools in one place on the right hand side. The essentials area is where you make your essential edits. So that's where you change things like color and tone. You've got the develop tab here, which is awesome. You can make quick changes to light, exposure, contrast, and shadows just by moving up sliders or bringing them down. You've also got things like curves, in your develop tab as well. Now curves is a really strong and powerful tool which you can control color. You can also control things like tone and luminosity as well. This is a great tool to get to grips with if you really wanna have control over some of your photos and it's something I highly recommend taking some time to learn. But after curves, you can also go into things like color and change your saturation and your vibrance and this is a really quick overall way of just increasing or decreasing the color in your image. After that, you can change the sharpness in your image and you can really change how sharp the image looks with this slider right here. You can also change the radius, so how much of the area of the image or how much of the pixels are affected by the sharpening. And then you can also use masking as well. Now we will go into this in a further tutorial but this is really an overall kind of review of Luminar Neo and how it performs. Noise reduction is also great if you've got grainy photos with maybe some color artifacts. This can really help in things where you can change the luminosity, which is also the light and the dark, or you can change the noise in the color areas of your image, which is decrease it in areas like this if you had noise in your image. Now, moving on from the develop tab, which is really, really useful, you then go on to things like enhance, which you can make very quick global changes by enhancing the look of your images just in this one slider. When you've finished with the enhance tab, you can then look at things like erase, where you can erase parts of your image and you can also change the structure, which is a little bit like clarity. If you don't know what clarity is, it's a little bit like sharpening, but actually it affects the midtones or the midtones in your image and it actually sharpens up those areas. So it adds more structure or clarity, as you can see here, giving you more of a kind of detailed look in the midtones. You can also change things like color. Now this is a really powerful tool where you have complete control over all the colors in your image. By looking at the HSL section of this, and then we click and change it to U, watch what happens when I change the orange. You can see that I can change the orange here to a yellow, or I can bring it up and turn it into more of a red orange. When you actually change this in the U section, you can change the actual color of the color. So when I change the red, it's gonna give it a different tone, which is affecting the skin there, which looks pretty crazy and we don't wanna do that, but you actually have the control to do that if you need to. This can be a really powerful tool and is really good, in my opinion, for things like landscapes. Now saturation is where you can increase the intensity or the saturation of the color in your image. And then you've got things like luminance where you can 
control how light the red or the color is or how dark the color is in your image. Really great tool and I fully recommend that you take some time and check it out. Now if we move on to black and white you can just quickly turn your image to black and white here and then you can change the colors within the image. So even though it's black and white you can still affect the colors where they would be in the image. So the red areas we can make darker or we can make lighter and you can do that with each image, sorry each color within this section. Now this is the luminosity so we're making it lighter or darker but then we can do the same with saturation. We can actually change the intensity and bring it back to color even though we converted it to black and white. So you've got full control over that area right there. So the actual essentials area in this edit section is really good and this is where you'll start your editing process. I love the way that Luminar Neo has made everything so easy to use. It's all with sliders, so you don't really need any experience at all. You can just jump in, get to grips with it, and start making some great changes. Okay, moving on from the Essentials tab, we are now in the Creative tab. And this is where a lot of people have got really excited about Luminar Neo because of all these AI tools which have promised so much. So are they going to deliver? Well, we're going to take a look and then you can see for yourself. The creative tab starts off with a Relight AI tool. So let's take a look at that one. Let's grab an image for this, which is going to be more suitable. So the Relight AI tool here is actually based around changing the light in your image, which doesn't sound that fancy or impressive, but it's the way that it does it is actually very impressive indeed. It uses something called 3D map technology. So it's like a depth map which controls the light in your image from front to back. Let's see how this actually works. So if I change the brightness near, you can see that now what's going to happen is the woman here is going to get brighter and that's because she's near or closer to the front of the image here. Now, if I change the brightness far, so if I bring it down, it's going to make the back of the image darker. So it's actually separated the back and the front of the image, which is brilliant, right? So now if we push this up a little bit more, the brightness near, it's going to light the woman again while keeping the background dark. Now what you can do is you can go into the depth slider and you can control how much you want to be darker and lighter. So let me show you what I mean. So if I bring this down, it's bringing the dark forward into the image. If I bring it back, it's bringing the near or the brightness near further into the background. So this controls the depth of the effect in your image and you can actually see it happening right here. So this is a brilliant tool and it's one of the tools I'm most excited about because we've never had technology like this where we can, instead of making uh, an overall change to the whole exposure in your image, you can really affect certain areas. It's just a really great addition to any editor and I'm so happy Luminar Neo has this tool inside. You can also make changes in your advanced settings. So what can we do here? We can actually make the near area warmer so we can make it more of a golden color and a warm area. So we're now making the model more of an orange color, which is giving it that warmth. And then in the background, we could do the same, or we could actually tone it different and actually bring it down, which makes it blue, separating this lovely golden look here from the background where it's now more blue. So you can see, or you should be able to see how this tool is really powerful, not just in portraits, but Wait till you take a look at this and how it affects uh, landscapes as well. It is a really good tool and it's a great addition. Sky AI is actually a tool which is found in Luminar AI. Now, if you had Luminar or you have Luminar, you'll know how this performs. But my actual experience of using this for a few days is it's actually a lot quicker and it just works a lot snappier in Luminar Neo. It's not a different tool. It has all of the same features and controls. It just works quicker, which is nice because sometimes it could take a little bit to load the effects in Luminar AI. But what you can do here, if you've never seen this tool, I make it quick, is you can just swap in a sky really quick and just basically change it for the sky that you had. And then you can make changes to your sky to make it look more realistic by refining things like the mask 
or the orientation. So you can change the vertical position of this, bring it up or down, and you can do that horizontally as well, or even the horizon position. Then you can use something called scene relighting, which is brilliant. You can actually relight the scene to match the sky, and that just makes it look more realistic. You can also do the same with saturation, changing the saturation of the buildings and everything around it so it looks better. And if you've got humans, that's us. If you've got us in the picture, you can also relight them too as well so it matches them. Now the reflection is brilliant as well. You can actually match the reflection of the sky in the water and you can also give it a long exposure look by adding a water blur. Now unfortunately we've only got a tiny bit of water here so we can't see that. Honestly it's a great tool, I used it in Luminar AI and it's a fantastic addition, I'm glad they've added it in Luminar Neo. Two of the new features or AI tools can actually be found strangely in the essentials section here under the erase tab, the erase tab sorry not the erase tab, whatever that is. But in the erase tab here, you can find remove power lines and remove dust spots. It just happens in this image, I have some power lines. So just by clicking on this, you can remove the power lines from the image. And it might take a few seconds, but it usually does a really good job. This is going to be really useful for people who have power lines in their photos and want to remove them. And I think it's going to be something that a lot of outdoor photographers or landscape photographers will be able to make good use of. You can see now that the power lines have been removed from the image and it's done a really good job. But if you do have areas in your image where the power lines still show up, the great news is you can actually go in and make changes to these. You've got this little brush here which shows up and then if you just happen to see any in your image, all you've got to do is just paint over them and it will get rid of them. And that's a nice addition as well. So it gives you control. Now, I think this is a great tool. I think they're actually going to make it better in future updates. There are a few little niggly things with this tool where sometimes it works great and other times it struggles. I'm just glad that they've added in this feature here where you can actually take control of the areas yourself if the actual AI doesn't do a great job. Now, moving on from this, we are going to take a look at remove dust spots. Sometimes when you're out in the field, you can come across dust, artifacts or dirt, which can get on your lens or your sensor, which is even worse. You want to avoid that, but it can happen and then it can really ruin the look of your image. As you can see here, there is dust spots on the image itself. Now, there's quite a few on this image, but once again, you've got this tool called Remove Dust Spots. This is going to be a really useful tool for people which want to remove them from their image nice and quick. So if we give this a blast, let's hit it and let's see how it removes the dust spots. You can see now that it's actually got rid of nearly all of the dust spots from the image and it's done a really good job, but it's not perfect. And that means that there is still a little bit of a way to go with this tool if you're really testing it with a difficult image like this one. The great news is that even though it's left a few little spots in the corners here, you do have that nice quick control again just to paint over these areas with this brush and then you can just press on erase and then it's going to erase those areas and take control of them for you. Which means that you're not completely stuck if it doesn't get rid of every single kind of spot of dust. Now it is going to be saving a lot of time for you in the long run even if it does leave a few behind but it's worth knowing that it may not do a 100% job which means that we may have to wait for some updates in this tool so that it actually gets refined and we don't have to actually use this in future. Now, I really want to take you into the portrait tab now or the portrait section here because this has some really great tools that if you haven't experienced before, I think you'd like to take a look at these, especially if you're someone that likes taking photos of people. So let's start off with this image using something called Portrait Bokeh AI. This is a brilliant tool and if you're new to Luminar, you're going to love this. So what this does is it creates blurred backgrounds for your portrait images. So it separates the subject, the lady or the man from your background. So if we click on this, you'll see how it works. You've got this amount slider here. And if I push this up, it's going to add an amount of blur into the photo. Watch what happens. Now I've pushed up this slider, you're going to see that the background is going to go blurred, just like this. Now if we hover over the lady here, you can see that it, 
what Luminar Neo has done is it's been able to recognize the woman and her bike and then it's used her as a selection which you can see in red here and it's separated the background which means that it can now know exactly what to blur and what to add depth to. This is a brilliant tool and I can't kind of emphasize enough how good this is. So it means really that you don't need to always have a low aperture lens. Now, of course, that's the best way to go. It's always best to do things in camera if you can. But if you just don't have that option or you don't have the money, you can get some fantastic results using this tool. Now, you can actually change things like how, you know, how much blur is in the image and also kind of the strength of the brush here. If you want to actually choose areas which Luminar Neo hasn't been able to pick out. But in this case, it's done a flawless job of picking out the woman from the background. And look how good it looks. It's really got rid of these distractions over here. Now, what else you can do is you can go to the background section here and you can actually add in things like depth correction. So you can choose to add how much depth you want to the image. So if I decide to bring this up, actually it's going to decrease the depth in the image and this means that it's not as blurred all the way back here but also you can take this the opposite way and you can actually bring this down and then what this does is this is going to bring it closer to the lady here where you've nearly got this blur right behind her all the way up to this wall here so it's using that depth control or that depth map that we got to see earlier on in Relight AI it's a great tool and you can also change things like how bright it is. You can change the highlights and add a glow to them. You can add a warmth into this. You can make it warmer and more kind of glowy and golden, or you can make it cooler. And you can even correct the edges. So if it doesn't get the edges quite right, you have correction over the edges just by using this slider. Brilliant, absolutely love this tool. Let's move into the other side of the portrait tools here, which is really making things like changes to the eyes and the skin and the lips. And let's have a look how that performs. If we go into the face section of the portrait tab here, we can have a look at the controls and the edits that you can make inside face AI. So you can change things like face light. If we push that up, you can see how it brightens the face, which can be really useful if you didn't get enough exposure with your studio lights when you're taking photos like this. You can slim the face. It's not something that I would ever use, but you have the option to do that if you want to. So you can slim down the face of the subject. Now, when we go into the eyes section, you have, you have a lot of different things that you can do to the eyes to really enhance the look of them. So if I want to, I can increase the iris flare. If you take a look at the eyes, you can see that it gives more of a brightness to the catch lights here which are made by the, the light in the background. You can also enhance the eyes, which is gonna really brighten them up like that. You can actually remove the red eye, if you get the red eye in your eyes that you're taking photos of. And you can even remove dark circles from under the eyes. Now this can be really useful as well. It's a really great tool to actually have kind of control over. You can even change the eyebrows if you want to and make them more defined. In all honesty, it's not a tool that I use that much, but I think if I was taking a lot of portrait photos and I wanted to quickly enhance them, then this would be a great place to go. And especially for things like eyes in this section here, you can make some really nice, quick and realistic changes to the eyes. They're not over the top, which is really nice. It doesn't just stop at eyes though. You can actually change things like the mouth as well. So you can add more saturation to the lips, making them bolder and brighter. You can increase the redness of the lips if you wanna go for that look. You can make them darker if you want to give them more uh, depth. And you can even whiten teeth if your teeth are showing. So there is a lot of things that you can do inside this. And this is gonna be really beneficial for, like I said, people which are taking photos uh, like portraits. Skin is another one where you can actually enhance the look of the skin. It's a little bit like a filter or it is a filter. You can start by getting rid of the defects by clicking on skin defects removal AI. And that will get rid of some of the big defects in the skin, which can be good overall. Now I find this is a very minimal uh, tool though, 
And actually, if anything, it, it probably underwhelms a little bit because it doesn't get rid of some of the obvious defects that you would see in the skin, some of the blemishes which you would notice. It's good for making a very small change, but actually, if you wanted to get in there and make changes, it would be best to use something like the Erase tool, zoom in and take care of the skin itself. But if you want to actually smooth the skin out, you can do that by pushing up the amount slider and it gives you this really nice glow or this smooth look to the skin. Now I advise that you actually don't go over the top with this because you know if you do it might look a bit crazy. Um, but I think Luminar Neo have done a good job of keeping this pretty down low. So if you, you know you put it up to 35 actually it's going to give you a really nice natural look and smooth out the skin. Also you can change things like the shine. Sometimes you can get some really bright highlights in the skin. You can get rid of these by using shine removal. Just by pushing it up, it balances out the evenness of the skin and gets rid of some of the shine. So a really handy tool to have. You can also affect things like body, where you can make it slimmer in places. If you do that kind of thing and that's what you like, and you can give it like a high key look, which you'd find in fashion photography and some portrait photography, and you can make changes there. Overall, a really powerful and impressive tool uh, and something which is going to be really nice for portrait photographers, wedding photographers, and people taking photos of people. Now let's take a look at the top here. We've got tools, edits, and presets. So Luminar Neo has these three sections. The tools is obviously where we've been making edits to our photo. The edit section, if we open this up, is the edits that we've made inside this layer. Now we're going to have a look at layers in a minute, which is a new feature and one that I'm really happy about. But let's have a look at edits for now. You can see that in the edit section, it shows us the changes that we've made so far. Now this is really useful because we can actually go into these and we can make changes to the changes essentially. Because if you decide that actually you've done too much or you haven't done enough, you can go into these and you can increase or decrease the edit that you've done. So this is a really handy section. Now, of course, you can go into this area as well and you can get rid of these by resetting them. Now, one of the strange things about this section is if I press on discard edits, it doesn't discard them. All it does is gray them out, which means that now all that happens is um, they're still there. But if I click on them, it actually makes them live again. So to actually get rid of the edits, if we wanted to get rid of this skin edit, what we do is we'd open it up we click here and press the bin and then it would delete it for good. So yeah, just letting you know that discard edits doesn't discard them for good. It just grays them out and then you can jump back into it and open it up again if you've changed your mind. Presets on the other hand is where you can add a preset to your photo for a very quick change. So if I wanted to add a preset to this image, I could easily do that by clicking on one of the presets here. And then let's say I decide to go for quirky mo, apply preset, and then this preset is gonna be applied to the image. Now this is really a crazy preset and it's completely over the top. But the great thing is you have a slider which you can decrease or increase the effect of the preset with. So if I bring that down, then it's gonna make the preset look a lot more natural and it's gonna be something that I'll be a lot more interested in using now. But I love this preset area here. It means that you can quickly add an overall look to your image. One thing I will say is though, that you need to add a preset at the start because if you don't, it will actually get rid of the edit effects that you've already applied, which is a bit weird. And I'm sure this is something that uh, Skyland will address in one of the updates. Um, but yeah, that's what happens. So you wanna make your preset at the start of your edit before you actually go in and start making edits to your photos. Otherwise, as you can see, your edit's gone and you'll lose your edits. Bit of a strange one, but it's still great to have that preset section here where we can just quickly add a nice look to our photo overall. I am so happy to hear about layers being in Luminar Neo and here they are on the left hand side. This is something I'm really happy to see has been introduced. Now your base layer will always be the image here which you've added in, which is this one right here. Now you can make as many edits as you want on this layer using the right hand side here in the tool section. So we can keep making edits to this bottom layer, changing things as much as we want. And as we know, 
If we make uh, an edit or a change, it's going to pop up here in the edit section and you're going to be able to see and change it right there. But it's still on this layer. Now, if we add another layer, what we can do here is we can then add in a, an image. So we can take an image from our computer and add this over the top if we want to. Or we can use some of the really nice uh, overlays and textures which will be introduced um, very soon. We've already got a bunch of these which we can use. So if we grab this here and add this in, you can see that this will be added on another layer right here. And you can see that this has been added to the overall look. Now, I absolutely love having this option available because it's going to give you so much more creative control. And that's what Luminar Neo is about. It's about giving you more creative control and giving you more versatility, which is super important. So now that I've added this in to the image, you can see that I've got this on this separate layer. And then now what I can do is I can click on this layer. I can go to tools and you will see that this layer properties shows up here. I can actually change the opacity, which means that I can add more of this effect in or less by changing the opacity. And I also have blend modes. Blend modes are really powerful and it's something which I use a lot in Photoshop. So having them as an option here in Luminar Neo is fantastic. And you can use different blend modes to get different effects with the textures and overlays which you will be applying to your photo. Now, some of these will look great and others will look horrible, but it's great to have all of these available to get different looks, giving you more versatility in this section. So once again, super happy that they've added layers in and there's so much more to go through in this. And I'm looking forward to visiting this in a different tutorial a bit later on. I will say one thing about layers though, which is very strange that I found out. If I go ahead here and add a PNG, so if I go onto this PNG and add this in, for some reason, it doesn't display as a PNG. It displays as a JPEG. And why do, why do I know it's a JPEG? Well, it has a transparent background, but for some reason, it's got a white background now. And then when I resize it, it does this weird thing where it resizes different to how it did at the start. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I think this is just a bit of a bug fix, which is going to be updated and taken care of. But it's worth noting that if you want to work with PNGs, and transparent layers. Currently, there is definitely an issue with this because they're displaying with the background and certainly not a PNG. Um, but you can still do cool things if you want with these by using you know, the blend modes. Like if I go for a screen blend mode here, you can see that now I've got this cool effect where I can put eyes in the text. But anyway, I digress. So how does Luminar Neo perform? You've seen me using a lot of the tools, you've seen it in action, but how does it really perform? Well, let's really do a test, shall we? So that you can see really for yourself. We're gonna set up some kind of stopwatch or stop clock. And first we're gonna start by seeing how long it takes to make a change using one of the AI tools. And then after that, we can look at things like how long it takes to export images. So these are gonna be really quick tests, but something that I know quite a few of you have had questions about. So these questions will be answered in this test. And here we go. So there's going to be a, a few seconds, which is different here, or maybe a second at most, because I can't press both of them at the same time. But a second either way, you're going to be able to see exactly how long this takes. Okay, guys, so that is a whopping 53 seconds for it to remove the power lines from the image. Now, I'm actually quite surprised by how long that took, but I do know that there is a lot of um, things or processes which take place to actually find where the power lines are in the image and how to keep everything else in the image looking exactly how it looks. So for some of you, you might be thinking, well, that's too long. But for the more patient ones like myself and plenty, plenty other people, you know, 53 seconds is it's not a minute. Yes, it does seem like a long time, but this is kind of, you know, really impressive software, which is doing AI edits. And it's something which is actually going to take you a lot quicker than it would if you were trying to get rid of them by hand by a long time. So 53 seconds is a long time, but it's still getting rid of all the power lines and it's doing a brilliant job.
Okay, so now let's look at things like exporting. We've made changes to images here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight five images. Or well, let's go for this one as well. Let's go for six images I'm going to highlight here. And we're going to see how long it takes to export six images, which are big files and which have had lots of different changes and edits made to them. So if we go on to export here, I'm going to get the clock up once again, this trusty massive clock, which takes up nearly the whole of the screen. It's quite annoying. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose these here. I'm going to press on the clock and press export. Okay, so that's two minutes and 50 seconds to export six photos, which are big and they've got lots of edits which have happened. But that's two minutes and 50 seconds. That's quite a long time, in my opinion. If you were to do this with Lightroom, it would be a lot quicker. So maybe Luminar Neo is actually really not that good for batch editing. So if you're someone that's like a wedding photographer and you want to batch edit lots of photos and then export them quickly, it may not be the best software for you. But if you're looking to do less edits and you're not bothered about, you know, waiting a little bit longer, then this really won't bother you at all. It really depends on which camp you sit in. So one of the new features inside Luminar Neo is Luminar Share. Now this is an app which you can download on your mobile through the Play Store or whatever it is on iOS. And then you can actually link up your computer to your mobile, which is great because you can share photos and things like that. Let's show you how it works. So if I go ahead to Luminar Share and open that up on my phone, now what I need to do is scan a QR code. To do that, you need to make sure that Luminar Neo is open on your computer. Go to Luminar Neo, file, and then click on share. And in here, you'll have Luminar Share. So if I click on that now, I've got this QR code which pops up. I'm going to click this on my phone, which says Scan QR, and then simply scan that, and it's connected. Now I can send photos to Luminar Neo. So I can send photos from my phone to Luminar Neo. So I just grab this photo. That's going to get sent to Luminar Neo now if I press Send to Luminar Neo. There we go. And that's now sending to Luminar Neo. And this actually only takes a very short amount of time, which is nice. What I can also do inside Luminar Share is actually mirror Luminar Neo on the computer. So if I click on that option, I can now choose an image on my computer. Let's say I go for this one. Go into the Edit tab. And then this is going to mirror out what I can see on my computer on my phone, which is really awesome. Now, whatever changes I make, you can see this actually happening live on the mobile at the same time. But actually, there's a slight lag to it, but you can still see it happening almost at the same time. Now, what I can do from this is I can actually share this from my computer to my phone. So I can press on the share button and then this shares it straight to my phone from my computer. So you've got this really nice link between the two, your mobile and your computer, which is actually really quick, I think. So you've got this really nice seamless connection between the two. And since the latest update, which has just happened a couple of days ago, it actually works a lot more smoothly, as you can see right here. So I think this is going to benefit people which like to work between their mobile phone and their computer a lot. And they'll find this is a really, really useful feature. So who's Luminar Neo for? Well, in my opinion, it's for photographers and photo editors looking for a quick and simple way to make impressive edits to their photos. It's got a nice, easy interface, which is easy to navigate and to use. And I think most people can just jump straight into this software and start making some changes straight away. If you're someone who is a seasoned editor though, and is used to Photoshop and Lightroom, then there may be some things that you find lacking in Luminar Neo. For instance, the batch editing is slower, as we've seen. And even though you have a lot of creative control, there is no denying that Photoshop is still 
the most comprehensive photo editor available. But it does take a long time to learn and that will put many people off. Overall so far, I think that Luminar Neo is actually super impressive. It's definitely the best AI photo editor on the market currently. It has nearly all the features that photographers and photo editors will need to really make impressive edits to their photos. It's really easy to use and it has some fantastic AI tools which will make photo editing a breeze. It's not perfect though. Well, not quite, but what is in life, right? It could run quicker in areas and there does seem to be a few minor bugs that pop up here and there, but certainly nothing that I think will affect you in the long run. And I think this is gonna be fixed anyway by Skylum's impressive updates which are always packed full of new tools and features and bug fixes. I think Skylum have done a great job with Luminar Neo, I really do. I think it's an impressive piece of software which is gonna to appeal to a lot of people, especially beginners and people who want more creative control without the steep learning curve that you get with Photoshop. Guys, I wanna thank you for sitting through this long video, which is a lot longer than I normally do, but I said I wanted to make a comprehensive in-depth review and really get into this software. If you're interested in picking up a copy of this, you can do that by clicking the link in the description where you will get a discount and a saving on this software, which is always nice if you wanna save some money, that is. I really appreciate you watching the video, like I said. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. It would mean a, a lot to me. And hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. I really look forward to seeing you in the next video where I will be making more tutorials on Luminar Neo. Whatever you do for the rest of the day, guys, make sure it's a good one. And I'll see you in the next video.